Colby Ray, risking American lives in Afghanistan the United States needs to, and is likely to, increase, United States troop strength in Afghanistan. That carries unavoidable increased risk to U.S. troops. According to the September 2014 bilateral security agreement between the United States and Afghanistan, 9,800 United States troops were to remain in Afghanistan the next year. By the end of 2016, United States forces were to be withdrawn. That, clearly, did not happen. There are currently about 8,500 American troops in Afghanistan. The Pentagon is seeking more than 3,000 additional troops. Early last month, a suicide bomber hit a United States military convoy in Kabul, killing eight Afghan civilians and injuring several other people, including three U.S. troops. In late April, two American soldiers lost their lives battling ISIS militants. Terrorist groups have increased their presence in Afghanistan. The Taliban government was ousted by the United States invasion in October 2001 after 9-11. Now the Taliban has regrouped and controls almost one third of the country. More than 2.000 United States troops have been killed by Al-Qaeda and the Taliban since 9-11. Other terrorist groups, Al-Qaeda, ISIS and the Islamic movement of Uzbekistan, also are active. The United States' goal was to help and train Afghan troops and then leave. That became impossible, because the Afghans still are unable to protect themselves. Afghanistan, a failed state, is one of the most corrupt, violent societies in the world. United States presence there has not decreased corruption or violence. Election fraud is a given, and the illegal opium trade appears unstoppable. Nothing seems to move within the country without bribery. Despite billions of aid and U.S. help with education, roads and health clinics, Afghans hold little goodwill for the United States, and a large number of them are vehemently anti-American, but we have no choice to stay in Afghanistan, the United States cannot abandon it the way Vietnam was abandoned. U.S. withdrawal in the near future likely would bring the Taliban to power, perhaps it would start a civil war there and increase the likelihood of another terrorist attack on the United States. Pakistan, which is supposedly a U.S. ally often has been on the side of terrorists. The United States has given more than $30 billion in economic and military aid to Pakistan, since 2002 in exchange for its assistance in fighting terrorism. Despite our generosity, Pakistan's tribal areas bordering Afghanistan have been a safe haven for the terrorists. As just one example, Osama bin Laden was living in Pakistan when the United States killed him. Pakistan rarely makes a major foreign policy decision without considering the ramifications, for its arch-rival, India. Pakistan's military and intelligence services, which are more powerful than the civilian government, support terrorists in Afghanistan to counteract India's influence in that country. The United States is clearly trapped in Afghanistan. Increasing troop strength is necessary to help the Afghan government fight the resurgent Taliban and other terrorist groups. Colby Ray, Professor Emeritus of Political Science at Southern Connecticut State University, lives in Virginia Beach.